It's not technically poisonous. <laughs> but... Alright, stop, 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 stop. Welcome to the Whiskey Tribe. 160 year old fake whiskey recipes. Why would you do such a horrific, tragic thing? Why make Okay, so uh, there are two sides to rectifying and making up old fake recipes. Okay. One's the nefarious one, and one's the trying to do the best with what you have one. Quick, do the bumper, and then we get. Back in the day, you know, you had guys making whiskey right. in the UK and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then over in the US and Kentucky, or late 1800s, people are making real whiskey. Yeah. When you're settling the West, you don't always have access to barrels of good, fine bourbon yeah. from Kentucky. You can't, being that mobile moves you away from yeah. things that need to be stationary for a very, very long time, like whiskey barrels. Right. Distillation was part of the farming process yeah. for hundreds of years. Yeah. But you didn't always have barrels or quality barrels, but you had stills because you could distill things. Sure. So it was fairly easy to get your hands on vodka. Right. Effectively, right. or new make, and then it was also you might be able to get your hands on a small quantity of actual whiskey. Okay. And the question was at a bar, right? You know, 800 miles from nowhere. Right. What do you do when you have one bottle of bourbon and a whole lot of vodka? So basically, what we've established is even in 1860, yeah, whiskey was considered the superior spirit. Yes. Just putting that out there. So in 1860, the book, and because I want you to remember that books were titled. Really oh. excitingly, John Stephen, yeah. MD, who billed himself as, I quote, a practical chemist and experienced liquor dealer, <laughs> right? And he wrote a, a pamphlet called, and this is super catchy, yeah. so hang with me here, yeah. a treatise on the manufacture, imitation, adulteration, and reduction of foreign wines, brandies, gins, rums, etc., etc. You had me that's, at adulteration. That's the title of the book, right? <laughs> He created this whiskey this for called Old Bourbon, this recipe. Now, uh, this called, because of the quantities, I needed a full 24 ounces of vodka. Okay. We're gonna just take some of it out of here. Yeah, so this is our vodka. So we're gonna use less vodka than he used. It's gonna be close, but we're gonna run out of room. So you need room to put in the other Yeah, and, and then I'm gonna top it off with vodka to make sure it's full before we, we're gonna use the bottle to mix. We're gonna start with six ounces of fine Evan Williams Kentucky bourbon. So, I'm curious one. to see how much the color, I wanna see how much the color changes here. Well, like hardly any at all. Two. So far. <laughs> Uh, All right, five. now we're getting like a light caramel. Okay. And six. Okay. Right. What you're trying to accomplish when you're rectifying at a bar like this, right. right, is the experience of whiskey by adding things to it, <laughs> right, so it's not just smooth vodka. I will tell you this, though. This is probably going to be tasty. All right. Here, try a little sip, see what you think. Before the additives that make it taste more like whiskey, it's gonna take like a slightly flavored, whiskey flavored vodka. It's just a really neutral with the slightest bit of sweetness on this. Yeah, it tastes like American blended whiskey. It tastes like what you would expect. That, that proportion of vodka to whiskey, mm -hmm. there's just like such a trace element of whiskey there. What we're gonna add Good is man. syrup <laughs> for, the, for the thick texture, because this is so light to the palate, yeah. and for a little more of the sweetness from like the barrel impact of the sure. caramelizing. So right? you want that, we're viscous, gonna add, that viscous mouth feel? Yeah, we're gonna add 4.5 milliliters. Yeah. It's your job is to cap this and mix it up. Ready, go. Oh, oh God. Mix that bad boy up. Your, remember, your whiskey must always be properly mixed up before you drink it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We used agave syrup. We got the, Do you want to try it along now, the way? Now, to be fair, I don't, I don't think they were rocking the agave back in. No, 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 no. But I, I'm, I'm crossing the line between simple syrup yeah. and like molasses. You want to try it first before we add the next thing? I, I guess. I mean, I'm not really looking forward to it, but. Come on. It's a step by step. You know you want to. Did it get more ethanol y? <laughs> it did. Wow. <laughs> Surprisingly, that added some body to it. Oh yeah. No, it, it, I mean, it's sweeter. It still tastes like, it tastes like Kessler's. <laughs> oh, well, so, I mean. okay, so here's the, here's the, here's the problem. The other ingredient that they put in there was this food grade additive that's for preser preservation of things. Okay. It's potassium nitrate. Saltpeter. Yeah, saltpeter. It's not technically poisonous, <laughs> but you can order food grade saltpeter, but I didn't have time. So it turns out at Lowe's, <laughs> you can get saltpeter, most potassium nitrate, the building in granule form. The building supply store? Yeah, stump remover. It destroys stumps. Yeah. 
So if I like poured this on your junk, it'll be fine. Keep out of reach of children. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably wise. D don't let it stick to your finger and dissolve because if you accidentally consume too much of it. Oh, we got to cut the top off. What are you doing? Keep out of reach of children. Yeah. So this is rookie hour in here. That's a, whoa. It's just like a, like just a salt. Powder. It looks like salt. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's the thing. We need 0.3 divided by four, which is gonna be 0.09, right? Don't put stump remover in your fake whiskey at home. So it's maybe we swap it for salt. That's like so. 0.03 milliliter. It's so small. Right? Like, that's why even bother? I didn't do anything. I know. When he said what you should put in there, right. he was working with like a 20 gallon recipe and it still only called for like an ounce of salt. This is like a big wooden vat they were doing back in the 1860s. Yeah, basically. Like an open air tank. We're just yeah. dumping crap in there. Now we color it until it looks like whiskey. We didn't do much. That's, I know. It's mostly vodka. So this, is a, <laughs> this is a relatively high quality. What the now, hell? If you really want they're an extra flavor. They're just selling colored vodka. I know. And they're putting in just such a token amount of whiskey. Yeah. To be able to say, oh yeah, there's some whiskey in there. Yeah, totally. Beep. Beep. Okay. Ooh, it's getting there. I think we need a really aged whiskey. It's like, ah! I got a little carried away, I think, on that one. Oh my God. Yeah. That yeah. looks like, you know what it looks like? It looks like Garrison Brothers. It looks like <laughs> cash strength. It totally does. Really dark whiskey. This is a recipe from um, 160 years ago. It looks like an incredibly dark whiskey. On it me. really does. Right. Well, it smells like Kessler's. <laughs> so here's the thing. If it's you got, saddled up. got more flavor than vodka. If you saddled up to a bar in the Old West and just this crazy shit town with nothing right. and they poured you that, but that was a really straightforward, right? basic recipe. It's just like some syrup and some food coloring, mm -hmm. and a lot, mostly vodka. We would have been fine if we would have put the saltpeter in there. I agree. As a matter of fact, the fact that I slipped it into your glass, you'll be fine. I want to try another one from the 1880s. This one's only working with 12 ounces of vodka. So this is mostly vodka. I'm asking myself, do I like it more than just a neat pour of vodka? It's like, yeah, there's a nice little sweetness in there. There we go. That's so, our mixer. Already looking promising, starting with less vodka. This one is from The Art of Blending and Compounding Liquors and Wines by Joseph Fleischmann. Yeah. Now remember, there is a nefarious use for this. People who literally bought a real barrel of whiskey and then turned it into tin in order to 10 times their income, they would put super sketchy shit like hydrochloric acid and things like this in it, right? It's called- Embalming fluid. It's called entrepreneurship. Yeah. <laughs> And we're gonna do a variation of one of his that takes it slightly up a notch and does use whiskey instead of, he suggested rum, if you couldn't get your hands on whiskey, because it was easier to get your hands on rum okay. in those days. So we're gonna start with um, uh, prune juice, four milliliters of prune juice. Okay. Okay, we're only using four milliliters of actual bourbon <laughs> on this one. Look at that. That's not even adding color at that point. I am convinced at this point, whatever whiskey they're putting in there is just to be able to say, yeah, it's real whiskey. Now we're gonna use cacao powder because what they wanted was St. John's bread extract. And the closest thing chemically to that is this thing called um, cadam powder. But cadam powder is harder to get. How totally different is that? It's, uh, it's, it's different, but it's different in the way <laughs> It's different in a way that's okay for what we're doing. Pringy Welcome syrup. to the whiskey trial. I know. Syrup. The, the channel of ish. Ish. When your recipe ish. is 160 years old, no, it's some... sometimes really hard yeah. to get it the way it was. Three milliliters. We that, have everything but the coloring. You notice how cloudy this is? I know. We're going to add the coloring real quick. It's very cloudy. Let's make it whiskey colored. Yeah, just like three this time. Oh, well, that's so little volume of liquid, though. Lighten it up a little bit. Boy, you ready for a shot of whiskey? You called me out, boy. Huh. You know what, though? What? I think the uh, the unsung hero in this thing is that prune juice. The prune juice is really <laughs> holding its weight? Oh, no, that prune juice is, it's carrying, it's carrying a lot of the flavor. It really is. That's a way more interesting nose than a, than it tastes. Yeah, it's just sweet. Yeah, it's just, again, very neutral. I gotta spirit. say, man, I kind but, of liked our other 
160 the simpler one right. yeah yeah i think there's this idea that, you know particularly in whiskey because it's such um an old school traditional storied history mm -hmm. oh if only i could have whiskey the way they did it back in the old days <laughs> yeah you're on back when they really knew how to make a good spirit whiskey <laughs> If you really start digging into what was available. Yeah, we're talking to most people. Yeah. Yeah, if you're right in the hotbed, I mean, there's a reason that bourbon whiskey got put on the map when even kings and queens requested whiskey from New Orleans, yeah. that old bourbon whiskey. Yeah, yeah. It was good. Yeah. But that's not what most of the population was drinking. This fun little, like, exploration into the history, but didn't discover anything interesting or good. No. So we'll make something interesting and good. Circling back yeah. to what I was saying earlier about just new things being made, new experiments and, and things that people are testing out and putting out in the market and see how well it's adopted. We get sent quite a few things from um, brands and whatnot and uh, you know, just to see if we like it. And usually if it's a liqueur, yeah, I said liqueur. Yeah, you did. How often are we doing liqueur? I've never. Usually if it's a this. liqueur, you know, it's not really our scene. This is a, a marriage of cold brew coffee mm -hmm. and i think it's a wheat vodka they spent several years dialing in the proportions recipe. of yes. things and stuff getting See, it that's... just right and the thing that i like about it we'll get into it right now uh, let's do like a neat pour and then there's like the rocks and then we'll do like a, a a cocktail thing well first let's just do this Just the unadulterated spirit. Okay. Now the thing I like about it. It smells like coffee. Right? It doesn't smell like sugar and. Nutty, chocolatey coffee note. Almost smells like chicory. Yeah. I like how the coffee shows up. That's nice. Yeah. Now, most people, whenever they're doing this, I think they're doing it either on the rocks and then they have this thing that uh, I watched Greg over at How to Drink. Mm -hmm. He was doing uh, a cold fashioned, super big in Australia. They're making really big inroads in the States these days. Okay. It's one part Mr. Black, okay. uh, one part uh, rye. <laughs> Look at me measure. Cause I, yes. This is the first time I've made the <sighs> cold fashion. I wanted to do it on camera. Ah. I've just been doing this on the rye. And so the other thing is, there's like, there's different notches in this. The first taking it of a notch, you do like the orange bitters. Okay. Dash. Okay. I think that's it. Now there's like orange. No, I don't like that. There you go. <laughs> there's a twist involved. Yeah. They go I, over. Yeah. Ah, uh, there you twist. go. And then they go. They they bring it over and they go, hey, young buck. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you drinking? <laughs> it's 1860. <laughs> it smells delicious. I haven't even had that. You know one. what it smells right. like? Coffee and a Terry's orange. No. It makes it taste like chocolate orange. <laughs> this is Terry's chocolate orange with coffee. Ooh. You see what I mean? Oh, I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. They're saying if you're going maximum fancy, they recommended this thing. It's the cold brew uh, drip tower. Okay. And Mr. Black, mm -hmm. your rye, same proportions. Uh, the orange peel, some thyme. Okay, the orange peel thyme. where? Like in this? Yeah, somewhere. Sure. So it pours through it? Okay. I think the orange. <laughs> in, I think the orange peel and the thyme should be in this section. Yes. Zest. Uh, did you zest? Did you zest mm -hmm. it well though? I'm suspicious of the thyme, quite frankly. <laughs> Boop. Proper amount of the rye. Now, how agonizingly slow should we do this through the? Like I ordered this at a bar, I'm gonna be all the way to dessert before my drink's ready. Oh, this is what you do at home to get your your significant other nice and plastered. There's spirals involved. You have to drink it. <laughs> so first, we'll try this. You ready? Ooh. So without it, without the bitters, much less orangey. Mm -hmm. A little dash, a little pep. It's in the aftertaste, the lingering Ooh. aftertaste. Like the thyme does kick up a little bit like the savory element. You know what, I think because of the thyme, you don't need the bitters. Big thank you to Mr. Black for sponsoring this episode. This cold brew drip tower, they're actually gonna give one away uh, to a person that subscribes to Whiskey Tribe channel and subscribes to the Mr. Black channel. It's gonna be linked in the description below and you leave a comment, they're gonna be choosing a commenter, you're gonna win like a bar kit and cold brew drip tower. What's the guy going on, Joe? 
We got a tote and a toy. So this is what's known as a whiskey, or it's known as a tote. You put any number of things in there, and that's about five full-size barrels worth of liquid. So by the time it goes through, by the time it goes through a still, obviously that'll condense down to a lot less. What'd you do, Joe? <laughs> What's going on? How many people do you think are going to watch this episode? You know, hopefully more because the, this machine is not meant for this environment. Oh, of course. It's the machine. So basically, we got two totes worth of low wines from uh, Balconis over in Waco. This is custom made to order from those guys. Magnificent Bastards voted on it in the Patreon. Um, low wines, for those that are unfamiliar, it's kind of like the very, very first pass through a still. It's like the rough draft of what that whiskey can turn into. Um, we're going to take that rough draft low wines from Balcones and we're going to put our own spin on it. Assuming we can actually get it over to the distillery. Rex, do you have a license for a for a Stand here, you John! <laughs> Joe, stop. You're cut too tight right here. It's digging in the soil. <laughs> Dude, you're just getting lower and lower. So you realize the deal that we made to get access right here? Mm -hmm. We just promised not to rip up the soil. <laughs> you have a background in landscaping, right? No. Making things look beautiful and perfect and unblemished? Not really. So, yes, then. No. Yes? No. I believe in you. Don't sell yourself short. <laughs> it's like quicksand, man. I'm doing great. <laughs> That's as mad as Joe gets right there. <laughs> you got insurance, right? You got this. Day one, hour one. How would you say the great forklift experiment of crowded barrels going so far, John? Spectacular. Pretty good? Yeah. Pretty good. Emergency brake back the other way. There you go. You're good. Oh, that's some rocks right there. Let me know if you want me to do it. You signed the waiver? No. Wait, you need to get out. <laughs> All right, stop, 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 stop. So looking back, what have we learned about this? We learned that John should always sign the waiver. What waiver? <laughs> back in action. <laughs> Got it. I think you're on. <laughs> you got it. Come on. Whoa. <laughs>